Hi, I'm Sherry from Whole Circle Studio, and today I wanted to show you how easy it is to make your own zipper pouch. I've been an adventurous sewer and quilter for more than 10 years, and I typically have no anxiety about piecing or quilting, but it used to be as soon as you would ask me to sew a zipper into something, I would freeze up. I'm happy to report I have conquered my zipper jitters. If you feel like I used to about sewing a zipper, I totally get the struggle and I'm gonna help you overcome it by sewing an easy zipper pouch. With my fabric pre-cut and ready to go and no distractions, I find that I can usually complete this project in about an hour. Because it's a quick project to complete, it makes an awesome gift to give or to keep for yourself. Today, I'm sewing my pouch with materials included in my zipper pouch kits. <clears throat> it includes pre-cut fabric that's 100% cotton, along with a metal zipper and a cute pull. Let's take a look at what those materials look like. I need first two pieces of fabric for my exterior. Here, I'm working with my own custom printed fabric included in the kit. It's a bit heavier cotton, a cotton twill, which has a really nice texture to it. I also need two pieces of fabric for my interior lining. This is 100% quilting cotton. I also have a zipper with a cute zipper pull already attached. Again, all of this pre-cut fabric and zipper is included in the kits, and if you're interested in those, you could find the link below. If you don't have a kit, you'll need to determine the size of your pouch, do a little bit of math, and cut. I'm just going to go and sew since I have my kit. Let's get started. In addition to my fabric and zipper, I'll also need to gather up a few more supplies. I'll include links to these supplies I'm showing in the video below. I'll need my sewing machine with a zipper foot attachment. This is what mine looks like for my machine. This attachment comes with many sewing machines, so check your accessories and owner's manual. A zipper foot makes sewing a zipper much easier and safer. It's less likely that I'll do damage to my sewing machine while sewing on a zipper if I'm using this attachment instead of my regular presser foot. I'll also need thread. I'm using 50 weight cotton thread. I like to use a color that matches or complements my exterior fabric. I'll need some pins. And my preference are these Iris Superfine pins. I like that they're very thin, so they take up less room in my fabric, making my sewing more precise and easier to insert into the fabric. And these Superfine pins do not bend easily, which make them really nice to work with. I'll need an iron and a pressing surface. I like this mini Oliso iron for small projects like this one. We'll need to press pretty close to the zipper and this fine tips makes that much easier. <clears throat> I'll also need some sharp scissors for fabric and of course a seam ripper because we all use those from time to time. Before you begin sewing, gently iron any wrinkles or creases in your fabric using a medium heat setting. Be careful not to fray the cut edges of your fabric. Once your fabric is all set, we will then take our zipper and unzip it about halfway. Then what we're gonna do is take one of our lining fabrics and place the zipper on top of it so that the correct side of the zipper is facing us. We'll then align the zipper tape, which is what this fabric attached to the zipper is called, so that the top edges are aligned and the side, side edges are aligned. I'm then gonna go ahead and pin this in place. Once this is pinned in place, I'll then go ahead and take one piece of my exterior fabric and I'm gonna take the printed side or the correct side of the fabric and place it down on top of the zipper and the lining fabric. So again, I'm looking at the incorrect side. The correct side is touching the zipper. 
and I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to align the top edges and the side edges and I'm going to pin. This is where these really thin pins are super helpful. They go through the fabric and the zipper and all these layers much easier and they don't take up a lot of room in the fabric. Once I have a pin secured through all three layers, I can then take out this previous pin that was just holding the lining and the zipper. This may look like a lot of pinning to you and you certainly don't have to pin this much. I prefer to do this because then when we get to the sewing machine, it's less I have to think about and less work. I also like to, you just saw me take out the pin that was holding just the lining and the zipper and place it again through all three layers here at a 90 degree angle. I like to do that at the beginning and the end. I find that then my layers stay nice and secure on the machine and don't then separate as I'm sewing, starting or ending. And then I'm just gonna go through. And again, now I'm pinning all three layers together, the lining, the zipper, and the exterior fabric and I can remove any pins that were just holding the lining and the zipper. That's just temporarily there to hold that in place so that things don't, that zipper doesn't shift in between the two pieces of fabric. Once I have all three layers, the lining, the zipper, and the exterior fabric pinned together, I'm ready to go sew. Using a zipper foot attachment on our machine, we're going to slowly sew along the top side of the zipper tape. So that's the side we pinned along. I'm going to sew a scant quarter inch away from the raw edge. That would be a little bit more than an eighth of an inch away from the zipper teeth. I'm just going to start at the beginning. I can take one of these pins out. And at the beginning and at the end, I do a few stitches in place or back, or back stitches. And my stitch length is set to a 2.2. And I'm just gonna stitch along this edge slowly. When we get towards the zipper head, we're gonna stop for a moment. So as I approach the zipper head, I'm just gonna pause. I'm gonna make sure my needle is in the down position. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. And this can be a little awkward. We're gonna pick up, go in between the two layers, and we're gonna move the zipper to the area that we already sewed in. So it's up here now. I'm gonna then put everything back into place. I'm gonna make sure my presser foot is down and I'm gonna continue sewing. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna do a few back stitches or stitches in place. We'll now flip both pieces of fabric over so that they're no longer touching the zipper and we're going to give this a nice press. This is where having a really nice tip on your iron comes in handy. So I'm just going to kind of finger press making sure it's nice and flat and we'll press from both sides and just give this a nice press. You might need to tug it a little bit. We 
Once I have it pressed from the front, I'll flip it over and press it from the back side. And you can move the zipper head if it's in your way. Once that's pressed, we're gonna hop on the machine again. We're going to top stitch along the seam that we just pressed. This will give our pouch a nice clean detail, allow it to lay nice and flat. Uh, this stitching will be visible, so I like to use a thread color that complements or matches my exterior fabric. And we're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from our seam. And again, this is where the zipper foot comes in really handy. I'm gonna go ahead again and do a couple of back stitches or stitches in place. These will be hidden in our seam allowance eventually, so don't worry if it looks a little bulky. And I'm just gonna stitch along that edge uh, about an eighth of an inch. I just realized I'm a little bit over, so no worries. I'm just gonna pick up my presser foot move it over there we go and i'll do again another couple of back stitches or stitches in place just to make that nice and secure and then i'm going to go along and just stitch we don't need to move the zipper head in this case it shouldn't get in the way and just go nice and slow When we get to the end, I'm gonna give another back stitch or stitch in place. We now have the first side of our pouch complete. Let's work on the other side. I'm going to take my second piece of lining, lay it down and place the first side of the pouch on top. Very important, we wanna go ahead and unzip our zipper about halfway and now, just like we did at the beginning, we're gonna align the top of the zipper tape with the top of the lining and also making sure that the sides are aligned. And we're gonna go ahead and pin, just like we did at the beginning, to secure it. Once that's pinned, I'm then going to take my other piece of lining, or, sorry, exterior fabric, the exterior fabric, I'm gonna put it correct side so it's facing down, facing the zipper. And again, I'm gonna align the top edges and the side edges, just like we did earlier. Go ahead and start at the ends, and I'm pinning through all three layers the lining, the second lining fabric, the zipper tape and the top, and I can remove this pin here that was just securing just the lining and the zipper. And again, I like to just do an extra pin at the side just to lock that end in place. And I'm taking out the pins as I go that are just attaching the lining and the zipper. Once all three layers are pinned together, I can take that other pin out. Once this is all secure, I'm ready to go ahead and hop over to my machine. We're now going to sew along the pinned edge or the top of the zipper tape exactly like we did earlier, about a scant quarter of an inch from the raw edge, and it'll be a little bit more than an eighth of an inch away from the zipper teeth. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of back stitches or stitches in place and sew right along.
going to make sure that I stop when I get close to the zipper head, making sure that the needle is in the down position, lift the presser foot, go ahead, fold back your fabric and move the zipper so that the zipper head is in an area that we've already sewed in. Press, put the fabric back, press her foot down and just continue on sewing. I'm now ready to flip both pieces of fabric over the exterior and the lining that I just sewed so that I could see both pieces of exterior fabric, flip it over both pieces of interior. And now I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and press what I just sewed, just like we did earlier, just doing the same thing on the second side that we did on the first. So again, I'm gonna just kind of finger press, kind of push it down where I want it to go, and then go ahead and press with my iron. We're going to go back to our sewing machine now. It's now time to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam that we just sewed, just like we did on the other side. We're in the home stretch of getting our zipper pouch complete. The next step is very, very, very important. Make sure that you unzip the zipper so that it is mostly open. If we don't do this, we're gonna run into some trouble later. Once that's set, we're gonna go ahead and shift the fabrics around so that the two exterior fabrics are on one side and the two lining fabrics are on the other. And so the, the two, the prints should be touching one another. We are then going to pin all the way around, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that the zipper teeth, the zipper tape are pressed or at least finger pressed towards the lining fabric so that I could see both gray pieces are going towards the lining fabric on both sides. So I'm gonna start there and pin here. I'm also gonna pay close attention that the top seam of the exterior fabrics are aligned. That'll give a nice finished look to those ends. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin. It's a little bulky at the zipper area and that is where, again, these thin pins really come into play. And I like to pin on both sides of that really critical alignment. Let's go ahead and do that at the other side. So we'll open this up. We're gonna make sure that the zipper is towards the lining fabric, away from the exterior. And I'm also then going to make sure that that seam where the exterior fabric and the zipper is meet on both pieces. And go ahead and pin. And I like to pin on both sides. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and pin all the way around I'm gonna start with the lining. There's also another really critical part. I'll start first by aligning the corners. I 
we don't need to pin about four inches here in the middle. We're gonna leave a hole there and not sew. So to remember that, I will maybe just put a pin in here and a pin in here and we'll leave about four inches without any pins. Remind you of this again when we're on the machine. Again, you don't need to do this much pinning. I prefer it because again, I find that it's less work and less things I have to align when I'm on the machine. And that way I can just think about sewing. And now we're gonna move over and align and pin our exterior fabrics. We're now ready to hop back over to our machine. We're now ready to sew all around the perimeter. I prefer to use my regular presser foot for this part. So I took my zipper foot off and put the presser foot on. We'll also be sewing about a half an inch away from the raw edge, a scant half an inch. So I used my seam guide, set my seam guide to that. And I know because it's set that the raw, if I align the raw edge of the fabric against this bar, I'll have a scant half an inch. Very important here, we want to make sure we leave that four inch gap in the lining fabric. So where I did not pin um, will be not sewn. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. I like to, to make sure it's nice and secure, do a couple of back stitches or stitches in place. And we're going to sew all around the perimeter, taking out the pins. I'm going to turn it at about a half an inch. And really important, make sure you leave that four inch gap at the inside your lining. So I'm gonna stop right there. After the perimeter is all sewn, leaving our four inch gap, I like to go ahead and cut some of the bulk out at the corners and near the zippers. You want to be very careful doing this. You don't want to get too close to your stitching. 
you want to make sure you leave a generous quarter inch of fabric away from any of your stitching. So first I'll go to the corners and snip. I'll also kind of ease that little corner there a little bit, just taking away some of this extra bulk. And I'll repeat that for all four corners. Again, be very careful doing this. You can always take away more fabric, but you can't put the fabric back. And a sharp pair of fabric scissors helps with this. Once all four corners are done, I'll then go ahead very carefully and take away a little bit of extra fabric near the zipper. Again, that'll help reduce that bulk. So just a little bit before we approach the zipper, I'll kind of come in and do a little bit of a curve. Be very careful. A very sharp pair of scissors helps with this because we're going through a lot of layers. You can see just ever so slightly. Don't get too close to that stitching. There we go. Next thing we'll do is we're gonna use that handy four inch opening that we left ourselves. And because we unzip the zipper, we're able to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of this inside out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take a tool like a hair marker or a bone folder or even a chopstick, anything you have. And I'm gonna go ahead while I have the opening here and poke out the corners very, very gently. Just kind of gently poke those out so it's nice and crisp. And again, because we did that trimming at these edges, we'll get a nice corner. Let me take a couple of different tries, a couple of different tools. There we go. Do the same for our lining. And also at the zipper. There's only one step left. We're going to keep the exterior fabric out, right, as it will look, so that looks nice. We're going to pull the entire lining out, and we need to seal up this opening. And you could do it in one of two ways. First thing I do, we're going to get our pins out, and then I'll show you the two ways. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fold in the raw edges by about a half an inch so that it's consistent with where we've already sewn. So raw edges are not exposed. And we could take our pins to secure that. And the first method that you could use, which is usually my preferred method if I have a little bit of extra time, although it doesn't take that much more time than the second method, but I'll go ahead with a matching color thread and just with my hand needle, go ahead and do a blind stitch right along that edge, or it'll be a little bit more visible, but it's a lining, so it probably doesn't matter as much we can go ahead and sew that close on our sewing machine and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm using an aqua thread in my machine that matches the aqua color of my lining 
and I'm just going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge that I folded under. Back stitching or stitching in place at the beginning of the end to secure those threads. And that's what it looks like. Once you have the opening and your lining sewn up, push the lining back inside the pouch and enjoy. I hope you're inspired to make your own zipper pouch. I'm listing some of my favorite kits and supplies below. I can't wait to see your pouches come together and what you stash inside of them. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe so you get notified when new tutorials are available. You can also access my complete library of free tutorials and patterns in the link below. Be sure to check it out. Until next time, happy stitching and quilting.